Welcome back to the channel, my friends. Warhammer Man Studios. I'm Warhammer Man, and today we're taking a look at Age of Sigmar and the new Meta Watch. This video is sponsored by CMO Games. More on that later. All right, so today we're going to be taking a look at the newest Meta Watch for Age of Sigmar. But before we jump in, I thought we should do just a little bit of a recap. So this is actually the August 2023 Sigmar faction and win rate data. So we're about a month out from this. So there have been some new changes since then. Obviously, the new Andor book is out and everything. So I don't expect these to 100% reflect the current state of Sigmar. But most of the changes made by Games Workshop to balance the game are going to be based on these numbers. So the most important thing we're going to focus on today is basically like our top three. We have 57 Hedonites of Slaanesh, and we want to be in that 55 range. 59 Osiarch Bone Reapers and 61 Soulblight Gravelords. So that's who we would expect to get some nerf slash like points increases. And then of course down here at the bottom, we have just outside of that 45 range, which is where we want to be. We have Slaves to Darkness, Night Haunt, and Skaven, as well as Maggotkin, all at 44. So we just need a slight improvement on those to bring them into the acceptable range. And then Cities of Sigmar just got a new book, a bunch of new units. A lot of that stuff's not even out yet, so we're kind of just going to ignore them on this one. And then we're going to pay special attention to Stormcast Eternals down here at 41. So really from the bottom side here, we're not going to be as focused on the four at 44. We're going to mostly pay attention to the Stormcast Eternals at 41. And then here on top, we're going to take a look at those top three as well. So let's just jump over here. We're going to take a look at the changes. Now there are some actual changes. I'll have the link in the description for all this stuff. But we're going to pay attention to the points first. So obviously we see right off the bat, Soul Blight Grave Lords have been the top position. So we can see all of the points adjustments are to the upside, which makes perfect sense. And there is definitely a combination of just your like auto include regular units that every army is going to have. And then also a lot of supporting characters as well. So the main thing that jumps out to me, the most important thing is the Deadwalker Zombies. They went up to 150. So there's a 30 point increase. So they were 120, which is basically 25% increase on the Deadwalker Zombies, which 30 points is a lot for a single unit to go up in a single change. But obviously zombies were severely undercosted before. And then on top of that, people are spamming them. So if you're taking like 60 zombies or something like that, your army just went up by 180 points. So you're basically getting like 10% less stuff after this. And that's just the changes to zombies. They also hit the Death Rattle Skeletons for 10 points and the Dire Wolves for 10 points as well. And the reason I talk about those specific units is basically every army has at least some of those at its core. So any changes to those is going to definitely affect anybody that's playing Soulblight Grave Lords. So right off the bat, even if you just had one each of those units, your army just went up by 50 points. And then of course you're going to have some of the supporting characters or potentially a couple units of Grave Guard, which went up by 10 points. We see things like the Vampire Lord on Zombie Dragon up by 20. And I think overall, they did a good job making sure that they didn't just raise the points on one unit and then you could just pick the next best unit that was now a little better because of the points changes. I think they did a good job actually correcting the problem by basically making all of the stuff that you see in every list go up by like 10 or more points. So in general, if you're playing Soulbite Gravelords and you were doing a minimal level of spamming, your army probably went up by about 100 points right here. Now, if you were spamming zombies, your army may have gone up as much as like 300 points. So in my opinion, these point changes are a really good way to essentially make sure the community doesn't just skate those changes and just do something similar to like continue with the same issue. I think Games Workshop did a good job right here. Next, we have the Osiarch Bone Reapers. Pretty minimal changes, actually. So we see the Harvester went down 20, the Mortec Guard went down 20, and the Mortec Crawler went down 20. And then we see the Death Riders gone up by 10 and then Catacross gone up by 40. So again, realistically, this isn't going to affect people's armies too badly. Most people were taking at least Catacross and then probably one or two squads of Death Riders. So likely saw like a 60 point increase. And realistically, you're probably taking one or two units of Mortec Guard. So if you had a single Harvester in your list or a Crawler for that matter, you basically just washed on points right here. So realistically, as far as like a nerf to Osiarch Bone Reapers, unless you were spamming the Death Riders, this probably doesn't affect your list too much. And the real tone down was made in the actual rules when it comes to like bringing models back and all that good stuff. 
And then last of the armies that need a little bit of a nerf is the Heat Knights of Slanesh. Please keep in mind here, this is one of my primary armies. So naturally, I'm a little biased. But the truth is, the Blissbarb Archers is the biggest change, in my opinion. Uh, they did go up by 10 points each. So if you're running like 50 or 60 of these, your army just went up by 50 or 60 points just based on them. Also, we saw the Blissbarb Seekers and Slickbade Seekers go up by 10 points. Most people are running like one unit of the Bliss Barb Seekers and then a bunch of the Bliss Barb Archers. So that's like 50 or 60 points your army went up by. Your Contorted Epitome is really good. So it did go up to 230 points, up 20. Mask went up by 10. Again, very good. But I think realistically, this is probably somewhere around, if you're spamming the Bliss Barb Archers, your army probably went up close to like 100 points. But if you're not, it's probably closer to like 50 or something like that. And then Slangor Fiend Bloods are pretty meh. A lot of people were taking Fiends and they're definitely good. So that 20 point difference is going to be nice. And then of course the Painbringers dropping down by 10. So I think here realistically the main difference is just if you were using the range which just about everybody has Bliss Barbs and most people are spamming them. You probably saw something like a 70 to 100 point change to your list if you were taking the uh, Contorted Epitome as well. And you're not really going to get much of that back from the points decreases. So I think realistically, if you're a Heat Knights player, you're probably losing one unit. And I think that's a good decision. The Bliss Barb Archers are very strong when comboed with the Seeker. And then, of course, the Epitome. The synergy in the Slanesh book is so good that I think probably losing that one unit is just going to put them on a balanced scale where they should be. So I think overall, I really like these changes. The only concern I have is essentially that the Bone Reapers saw reductions in points on some units that are pretty well included in every army. And the main increase in points they saw is to a unique character that they can only have one of. So I think most of them probably washed on points right here. So the rules are going to affect them a little bit more. Changes to Soul Blight, obviously the points and the rules. And then if you were spamming Deadwalker Zombies, you're going to have to rework your list completely because of the massive increase to them. So that's it for the people that basically needed like a nerf or some points adjustments. And then let's take a look at who got a little boost off of this. So Ideneth saw some pretty decent decreases. The three different characters are like 20 or 30 points each, including the Leviathan. And then we see some of like the uh, regularly included units dropping by like 10 a piece as well. So it should help to make sure that Ideneth doesn't drop down out of like the acceptable range. Seraphon, very minimal changes, just the Star Master himself going up by 15 points. Not bad considering how good Psychic is and uh, the Salon is obviously one of the most powerful. And then Maggotkin, we did see the Harbinger of Decay go up by 50 points, which is a massive change, but everything else went down. So if you were taking the Harbinger, it's not really a big deal because you're going to more than make up for it with these other reductions. And I think the reduction in the Plague Bearers and then also the Putrid Blight Kings is going to really help out Maggotkin. Or at least make up for the increases. So this should help to push them up by a couple of points. We do see pretty minimal changes to the Skaven. All reductions. Deathmaster, Gracier on Screaming Bell, and the Hellpit Abomination all dropping by 20. And then Warp Lightning Cannon and Warplock Giselles dropping by 10. Hopefully that's enough to push Skaven up. They're definitely in need of some love. Not just like rules or points wise, but like a little bit of a range refresh. So I'm hoping Games Workshop is kind of taking it easy on them, knowing that there's some cool stuff coming down the pipeline. And then next we have Slaves to Darkness. And I thought they did a pretty good job on this overall. You see pretty minimal changes, but to like some units that are in almost every single list. Uh, Lord on Karkadrak dropping by 20 points down to 180. So we have seen a ton of reductions in the Karkadrak. Very good unit. And then we also see the Chaos Warriors coming down by 20. So that is a really nice change as well, as most people are using at least one unit of Chaos Warriors. Oftentimes we're seeing that reinforced or multiple units. And then of course Chosen, almost in every army as well. We often see like 5, 10, sometimes even more. So them dropping by 10 points a piece is pretty nice. And then of course Varengard dropping by 10 as well. It's not a very big change based on their like total points cost. But could make a difference as there's a couple times where you're like short a couple points. So something like a Varendard unit dropping by 10 could make it so you're able to squeeze in another unit you want. Ogroid Theradons, pretty good damage output. Don't see a ton of them. I think overall this should help to uh, push the Slaves to Darkness up a little bit. If you're like most lists and had like the Karkadrak, a couple Chaos Warriors in there and some Chosen, you probably saw about a 100 point reduction in your list. So you can either expand out a unit pretty decent, take maybe one more supporting character, 
or upgrade something like a unit of knights into a unit of Varengard. Definitely opens up the list building a little bit. Even just a couple of small changes to a couple key units really just lets you kind of squeeze in that extra unit that you wanted, but couldn't quite do because it was like five or 10 points too much. So I do think these are going to be some meaningful changes as well. So Night Hunt getting a little bit of love, nothing too crazy. 20 points down on the Blade Gas Revenants, 20 points down on the Dread Scythe Herodons, and then 10 down on the Hex Race. And then Lady Olander dropping by 40 points, a meaningful decrease in her points. So probably not going to be like a game changer unless you were spamming one of these units here. But you should theoretically be able to get a little bit nicer of a unit with the extra points or potentially like reinforce or take an extra unit. Now a quick message from today's sponsor. CMO Games has been selling Games Workshop products online for over 20 years. They carry the full line of Games Workshop products including Warhammer 40,000, Age of Sigmar, Necromunda, Blood Bowl, Paint Tools, and more. Almost all Games Workshop products are priced at 15% off MSRP. CMO Games takes pre-orders for most Games Workshop products released at their earliest date possible. 12.01 a.m. on Saturday, they go live. Most of these pre-order products are also priced at 15% off MSRP. CMO Games offer free shipping in the U.S. 48 with an order of $50 or more. Their customer service is top-notch and they ship most orders within 24 hours. Visit CMOGames.com using the affiliate link in the description and let them know that you heard about CMO Games from Warhammer Man. Now back to the video. So you may have noticed that I did skip over Stormcast Eternals. I want to save that till the end because it's just so ridiculous. So Stormcast is basically Games Workshop Space Marines. But the difference is that the community just doesn't love them or embrace them the same way that the Space Marines do. They're down at like that 41%. So we basically need to see like a meaningful increase in Stormcast Eternal's win rate just to be in the acceptable range and not to be just that dirty dog at the bottom of the list. And after seeing these points changes right here, I just don't think it's going to happen. So we did see some changes to like some of the support characters that you see often. The Knight Relictor, 10 points. Lord Imperitant, down 20 points. Lord Relictor, down 20 points. So most people had at least like one of those characters in their list. So it's probably going to make out with like 10 or 20 points. And then as far as like the actual units, the Liberators went down by 10 points. Praetors went down by 10 points. Sequiturs down by 10 points. And then Vindictors down by 10 points. So most people had like three of those units, maybe four of those units in their army. So maybe saw like a 40 point decrease on them as well. And then the Chariot, not really going to make much of a difference with that drop of 10. The real changes in this, honestly, have to come from Annihilators. And while Annihilators are good, unless you were basically spamming them, the regular Annihilators came down by 20 points, and the Annihilators with Meteoric Grand Hammers came down by 20 points, you're really not seeing a meaningful decrease in your army. And considering that Stormcast Eternals has by far like the most War Scrolls, I mean like an insane amount of War Scrolls, I think it's a good idea to drop the base points on like your Liberators, your Secretors, and your Vindictors as pretty much every army is going to have at least some combination of those in there. So they're going to benefit from this. But I mean, let's just say that's like a 30 point drop, like 10 each, and you have three of those units. Maybe you have one of the supporting characters as well. So you're seeing like a 50 point decrease in your army. I just don't really see much of a change there. So like basically, unless you're spamming Annihilators or maybe Games Workshop wants you to spam Annihilators, I'm just not sure this makes like any difference to a Stormcast Eternals player. Because right now, if you took that extra 50 points and put it into like your most efficient unit, I don't think it changes the win rate of like any of your games. I can't think of a specific game where I saw a Stormcast Eternals player, if they would have just had like 50 or 100 more points, would have won the game versus losing it. So as far as all these changes are concerned, I think Games Workshop did a pretty good job. The rules changes also will help as well. But a nice combination of hitting like key units and focusing not just on the external balance of the armies, but also the internal balance as well. I think the only real miss right here is going to be on the Stormcast Eternals. Now, if you are one of those people that was spamming Annihilators, you're probably loving this change right here. It's not crazy to think that you saved 100 points just on those. Not to mention some of your base units and characters. You probably have like an extra 150 points to spend, which means you could just grab another unit of Annihilators. But for everybody else playing Stormcast, I don't know. I have a feeling they're still going to be in last place when we revisit this in the future. So I wanted to mix this video up a bit because I know sometimes the meta watch videos are a little bit boring and make it a little bit more about my opinions and a little less about just reading the article. So we're going to finish up here with the General's Handbook 2022-2023 changes here in Magenta. And one of the biggest ones we saw are these changes here. So we'll start off with the uh, Spell Lore's Lore of Primal Frost. 
casting value of 10, range of 18, and if successfully cast, resolve one of the following effects. And then you could pick from these two bullet points here. Pick one enemy incarnate within range and visible to the caster. Inflict a D3 mortal wounds on the unit bonded to that incarnate. And then that incarnate immediately loses a power level to a minimum of one and becomes wild. So you basically damage whoever summoned the incarnate. The incarnate goes wild and then also loses a level as well. So very, very cool. And essentially like a nerf to the incarnate without increasing the points on it. So it doesn't necessarily hurt your enemy for taking an incarnate but it gives you a little bit more defense against it. I really, really like that. And then pick one predatory endless spell within range and visible to the caster that was summoned by an enemy wizard. Inflict a D3 mortal wounds on the enemy wizard. Then the endless spell is dispelled. So again, same thing. We're seeing a lot more of the incarnates. We're seeing a lot more of the endless spells. So this gives the defensive player a little bit more to kind of like stop them or power them down as opposed to hurting the player that's bringing those endless spells by raising the points or raising the points on the incarnate. So overall, I think this is a great change. And then Lore of the Primal Frost, Merciless Blizzard. Add the following to the end of the rule. This spell cannot be cast by a unit that was set up or moved earlier in this phase. So this gets rid of like a lot of the jank issues that we're having where you're basically like teleporting someone across or bringing them in from reserves and then suddenly hitting your opponent with like this little power bomb. So it kind of gets rid of the feel bad moments, which in my opinion, always a good thing. And then no reward without risk, feedback, overload. Change to when a wizard hero is slain before removing that model from play, roll a dice on a four plus the wizard explodes as their magical energies are released uncontrollably. Each unit within a number of inches equal to the wounds characteristic of the wizard suffers a D3 mortal wounds, roll separately for each unit. So pretty cool. It is on a four plus and the size of the explosion is based on the wizard's wounds. So if you have some little base wizard, it's going to be like a small explosion. If you have some like beast mode wizard, it's going to be a big explosion. So definitely still some nice potential to get some devastation off with this one. And then next we have the Endless Spells, Malevolent Maelstorm, Morbid Detonation. Change the last paragraph to when this Endless Spell is removed from play. If the dice beside it is a 6, Endless Spell explodes. When it explodes, each unit within 12 of this Endless Spell suffers a D3 Mortal Wounds. Wizards and heroes suffer 3 Mortal Wounds instead of a D3. So very cool. And then finally we have the Endless Spells, Umbral Spellport, Arcane Passage. Change the last sentence to an endless spell set up in this manner does not count as having moved, but cannot move until the next hero phase. So again, just trying to stop a little bit of the like jank kind of like feel bad moments. So again, overall, I think these are some nice changes. I did watch the meta watch video. If you got a little time or you're interested, it's definitely worth a watch just to kind of see like the mentality behind it. I do overall think these are some nice changes. And for the most part, I think they're right on. I think the biggest miss here is probably going to be the Stormcast Eternals. For the reasons that we discuss but let me know what you think down below do you think they went a little too hard on anybody do you think they could have boosted up some of the lower factions a little bit more i think for me the most meaningful changes are when you take like one of the top lists and put them against one of the bottom lists and then say after these changes is now that bottom list going to win one more out of every like five or ten games and when i look at stormcast eternals and then we put them up against one of these death armies i'm just not sure it's going to make any difference at all so while I don't necessarily think they should have went harder on like the Bone Reapers or the Soulblight Gravelords, the boost that we're seeing to Stormcast is probably not going to make any difference. But maybe I'm wrong, so let me know down below in the comments. Always like to hear back from you guys. You know I've been a little more focused on 40k and 10th edition lately, so maybe some of my opinions or statements here are completely off base. I'd love for you to point them out in the comments, in a pleasant way of course. So special thanks to CMO Games for sponsoring this video. Check them out to save 15% on Games Workshop products. Link in the description. That's it for today. Warhammer Man Studios. I'm Warhammer Man. And for the most part, I think Games Workshop did pretty good on this. And I'm out of here.